Players eliminated. Sadly, no tomorrow. Nias, Love CX, and Aria have ended their journey to try to get to BlizzCon and become the champion. On a positive note, they will still be attending BlizzCon, so you can meet up with all your favorite players. Uh, you know, if you want to get their signatures or anything, anything like that, any fanboy-related things that you guys want, they will be there for that. That's quite kind of them. That's uh, it's going to be an excellent event. And uh, competing today, we have for the glory and a piece of the one hundred thousand dollar prize pool. To go along with their title, the remaining eight players in the winner's bracket. If they win, they'll go directly to the BlizzCon main stage finals. We have Tice versus Kano, followed by Kranich versus Daimang, Ostkaka versus Hopform, and we're going to round it up with Ping Ping Ho versus Zoro. And for tomorrow, we'll see the final four players that will uh, move on to BlizzCon. It will be the decider matches. Yep, as per our proud tradition, too, the players will be competing in a best of five conquest format. And just in case you haven't quite got it down yet, here's a refresher on how it works. Conquest is a match format created for competitive Hearthstone tournament play and is the official match format for the 2015 Hearthstone World Championship. Here's how it works. Each player begins with three decks using a unique class for each deck. For example, a player can have a warrior deck, a priest deck, and a warlock deck, but not two different warlock decks. When a match begins, each player selects their first deck without telling the other player which one they've chosen to play with. Herash versus Uther. After the first game ends, the winning player's deck is declared victorious and can no longer be used, and they must choose from their remaining decks for game two. The losing player may choose to use the same deck they just lost with, or one of their remaining decks. This continues through games three, four, and five if necessary. Once a player has conquered their opponent with all three of their decks, the match is over and the winning player advances. Conquest will be used at the 2015 Hearthstone World Championship, which has a prize pool of $250,000. Now that you know the format, try taking part in an online tournament or a fireside gathering near you. Well, we still have a lot of talent left in the tournament, and each region still has at least one player with, with their dreams intact. Um, and with that said, our, st our stage is set. We're ready for our first match, brought to you by Kibler, Amaz, and Froden. Gentlemen, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Crip and Rachel. Welcome and greetings from the caster desk. It's day three of the Hearthstone World Championship, and today we get down to nitty-gritty to find out who is going to the round of eight and getting their ticket to the main event at BlizzCon. My name is Froden. I'm joined by Amaz and Brian Kibler. And we are really excited about today. We have a lot of regions battling it out, and we're very excited to see what's going to be transpiring over the next few hours. Uh, what have you been looking forward to, particularly from your side, Kipper? Uh, one of the most exciting things to me is that uh, all of the least represented classes uh, actually moved on. Both mm -hmm. players playing Shaman advanced in their initial matches, as well as Tice as the only representative of Priest in the tournament. Sure. And then, Amaz, what about the player storyline? What's been sticking out to you? Oh, I've just been... Um just been following Tice all day because, oh, actually all month. He's been on a hot streak lately, and I'm pretty sure he's going to do really well. I, he, I like he's it, my boss. favorite to win the whole thing. Very right. Keep, keep up that kind of pun energy. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the brackets to see how everything has gone forth. Uh, from the very beginning of the event, we had 16 players, four players in each group, each region separated within a group. So four regions, four players from each of those regions in a group. In group A, we have Tice versus Kano, as mentioned at the top of the show, will be playing. Uh, of course, the loser of that match, they're not eliminated. They'll be playing Jab in Group A. Yeah, they'll be going in tomorrow to face uh, face Jab, who had a, a tremendous uh, epic finish to his match just yesterday. Uh, then in Group B, uh, we have Kranich versus Zoro, the winner of which will go to BlizzCon. The loser of which faces Life Coach tomorrow. All right, and of course, Group C, Oskaka and Hotform is going to play later today. And the winner goes to BlizzCon. The loser will have to face Neoyo for the second spot in Group C. That's right, Neoyo being one of the few players in the Asia Pacific region to actually drop their match. Players like Ping Ping Ho able to keep up that mantra of being one of the underestimated but very strong regions nonetheless. Daimang versus Ping Ping Ho will be wrapping up, which is very fun because we get to see some shamans go through. Only one shaman can go through, unfortunately. We'll talk more about that later. The loser will stay alive for day four 
but they'll have to get through Purple, who did manage to take out Nyria in my favorite series of the tournament so far. That was probably the best match that we've seen so far. Uh, a number of incredible games, some remarkable comebacks. Uh, it looked like Purple was in a really bad spot in that last game, but he had an amazing single turn kill against right. uh, against uh, Nyria there to knock him out. With, with Rogue, nonetheless, yeah. validating yeah. his lineup. Both choices. Rogues are still in the tournament as well. All three Rogues, rather. Not so, both Shamans, Rogue, <laughs> and uh, the Priests. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. All right, well, we're about to get into the action right away. And to kick things off, we have Kano versus Tice. Let's get ready for game number one. No versus Tice. Two players, six different classes. Japan versus Europe. I'm really excited. We don't really get to see Japanese players that often, but in other games, you know, outside of Hearthstone, Japan, primarily with card games, have been very active, and it's it's been a long time coming. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the, the players who get the most sort of spotlight, at least uh, in the, the Twitch community, tend to be the, the Western players. Players like Tice, as we were saying, we've seen Tice on an incredible run over the past several months. He's been in the spotlight for a while. Kano is a player uh, who, you know, clearly has been very successful. He's here playing for the BlizzCon spot, uh, but he's not a player who many people have really had a chance to see play in the Western scene. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That, that's that's what he's here for, right? I mean, this is the biggest stage. You're paying for $250,000, and um, everybody's looking at you. So whether you do good or bad, um, whatever your decisions are, it's going to be magnified like 100 times fold. Well, I think uh, he's off to a really good start. Being able to go to the winner's match of Group A here, he's one step away from going to the round of eight and essentially doubling up the money, right? Because the whole point in, in BlizzCon is you ascend the, the ladder of how you finish, but you also keep doubling in prize pool until you get to $100,000 effectively. Uh, and then you're going to be able to be the world champion. That's what we're going to be able to find out. Who is going to the main stage? for BlizzCon in the round of eights. Druid versus Warrior to start things off. But again, this is not the Warrior that you're probably expecting. It's the Patron Warrior coming out from Tice. Yeah. Despite the change to Warsong Commander, uh, Tice, as well as Oskaka, chose to run the Patron Warrior deck. It's much less of a uh, single turn combo kill deck, doesn't because it doesn't include Warsong Commander anymore. Uh, but in this matchup, it, it operates much the same way. The goal of the deck here is to use the card Grim Patron itself and generate a large board that's very difficult for the Druids to deal with. Which actually makes it the game more interactive, right? I mean, before... And more uh, fun. Yeah, Patron would just play everything from their hand and just kill. Uh, but now, um, you know, Druids, for example, Kano can see a board full of Patrons and see if he can sort out a situation where he can deal with all these creatures. In some capacities, it feels like to some players, the warrior, the patron warrior, excuse me, has gotten better in this matchup specifically against Druid. Because if you're so focused on board presence and you're using patron flood to still be a primary dominant strategy, it's very difficult for Druid to overcome that still, even though the Warsong Commander has been changed. Yeah, the interesting thing is, uh, I, I agree with that it, it feels like the Patient Warrior deck actually, with the removal of Warsong Commander, is stronger here. Rather than playing the Warsong Commanders, which in this matchup were generally fairly weak, uh, it instead has uh, copies of uh, Grimash, Hellscream, and Dr. Boom, which are just strong cards that can help end the game from the sort of mid-range style positions that really the matchup ends up in. Yeah, I can feel that because... With the Warsong Commander, the, the way the Patron Warrior felt the most consistent was gravitating towards that one-turn kill a lot of the times. And against specific matchups, you had to revise that often, but every card fed into that ideology, right? You had the two unstable ghouls, the, 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 the two slams, the two cycles of everything like that. But now it's more of a lot of one ofs, you know, one unstable ghoul, one Taskmaster, one slam. It keeps you very versatile, but you still keep that board-centric approach. Mm -hmm. Well, Tysa um, chooses to coin on Acolyte since he has another one of his hand. And uh, this Keeper's going to come down and it's going to work really well since Tys cannot actually play the Despite since he used the coin for the Acolyte. Yeah, Tys still has the, the second Acolyte he can choose to play this turn. Uh, I imagine we'll likely see that come down. Even if he just gets two cards from the Acolyte and it, and it uh, does a small amount of incremental damage, it'll still be, be worth the cost to him. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it, it, in the end, it makes up for the other lack of draw from the Acolyte. And again, the whole point is that he just continues to answer the Druid threats and not fall too far behind on the board here. There's Frothing Berserker. Frothing Berserker is a card that a number of players uh, actually removed from the 
sort of new school patient warrior decks. Mm -hmm. Frothing Brisker previously was extremely powerful in combination with Warsong Commander to deal a lot of damage in a single turn, but it's still just a good threat. And this is actually a matchup where Frothing Berserker would often come down early, even in the combo-centric version of Patron Warrior, just because it's a strong threat that can uh, require a response quickly. Yeah, I wonder if there's another deck that can actually utilize the spell charge to just give Frothing Berserker a charge <laughs> anyways, because it's cost three mana, right? It's the exact same thing as the uh, Warzone Commander would have done. It's true, although I feel like if you're going to be spending a three-mana minion that wants charge, it most likely would be the Raging Morgan, yeah. <laughs> given that you have a lot of ways to double-dip the damage. So it's like playing two Falling Berserkers. Okay. And this is, a, this is a strong play from uh, Kano here. Even though Tice does have the Death Spite to immediately remove Emperor Tharsin, uh, he has a, a, a handful of powerful spells he's able to reduce. This is interesting development indeed, because now with the Dread Corsair, Tice has not only removal options, but ways to draw a lot of cards and get minions on the board. Mm -hmm. Although, Definitely wants to calculate whether uh, he wants to use the Battle Rage first to fish out more options, or he can just play the board here as well, right? Both accolades hit the Keeper, and Ooh. the Whirlwind effects will, you know, effectively clear the board. Now you do want to play the Dread Corsair before you use the weapon, of course. Right. Frothing Berserker, Dread Corsair, you can swing with the weapon and then Battle Rage for four more cards. Yeah, Battle Rage has, has always been one of the most powerful cards in the Patron Warrior deck, whether the, the previous combo version and now in this deck. Uh, just the ability to reload uh, so quickly and so many cards at once is extremely is. powerful. And it, it may seem like you know, damaging your minions here is uh, generally something of a drawback, but when not only are you getting the trigger from uh, Frothing Berserker, you're also just drawing four new cards. It's really, really powerful. This is also quite scary for Kano because the Frothing Berserker can't be killed right now with his current hand. Uh, you're correct. I was just examining, like, well, you know, there really isn't any removal yes. spells. Because if, if he found Force of Nature Duh. or uh, something like a, a Swipe or Wrath, he'd be in reasonable sure. shape. Here, if he wants to kill that Frothing Berserker, his his best bet is to play Savage Roar and that Druid of the Claw. That's right. <laughs> but that's not very preferable no, at all. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a really inefficient use of his resources and would use his entire turn just reacting, which is really not what you want to be doing from the Druid seat. I haven't actually seen a game where Frothing Berserker gets to attack after the <laughs> Warsaw Commander nerf, so uh, this is pretty cool for Tice. Yeah, this is a, a very strong position for Tice here. He uh, has the Armorsmith will potentially give him significant amount of armor to preserve his, his uh, life total if his opponent were to, say, have uh, the combo. Though, I think that if he did, uh, it would probably be still be too much for, for Tice to bear. Yeah, that's fair. Um, well, Tice is in a training for one of Shredder's, getting some armor and light, and he also getting that buff. That one health uh, owl is also problematic, too, considering that uh, it can just get killed off or defended by that unstable goal, so it challenges everything here. He also knows that his opponent probably doesn't have the second Keeper of the Grove, because he would have not only silenced the, the second Acolyte, but have also dealt with his Frothing Berserker. So he can make that assumption that the unstable goal will get a lot of mileage. And he is threatened to kill his opponent, you know, not more than two weeks after the War Song has been changed. We're still having Father Berserker go to the face for above 10 damage. 13, boom, and now a huge chunk out of Nose life total. And he still doesn't have any real clean removal here. Yeah, he has to give up something, whether it's his health total of Savage Roar or give up the Druid the Claw mm -hmm. after the Unstable Ghoul clears off Nose board. Are we calling him No or Kano? I, I thought we were calling him Kano. Oh, Kano? But, oh. but his name says, he said that his name is based off knowledge, so maybe it is No. Oh. Who knows? The innkeeper's <laughs> saying, <laughs> innkeeper saying no. The innkeeper's saying no. Okay, I'll follow the innkeeper's uh, lead here. Well, that is a that is a Druid of the Claw that's willing to play for the team. Yeah, Let me tell you, yeah. taking 19 damage, <laughs> he is selfless. Even if he were in bear form, <laughs> not yeah. nearly enough. That's right, not even Deathwing would survive that. Yesterday kind of was time. National Cat Day. Look at that cat, you know? He's, he des he's deserving of celebration on a national scale. What, what do you even do on National Cat Day? Uh, mostly just, just complain that there are no kittens available. <laughs> that's right. I believe, uh, I believe uh, you know, there were some people delivering kittens. Yes. You can order a car of kittens. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> but it costs like 30 bucks for half an hour. And you, and you apparently can't do it here because we tried. So, we still tried. cheaper than Control Warrior. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, you, you get you get a lot of value out of control where you play it for a long <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> no. We were half joking.
<laughs> well, you know, he does have Patron in hand with some uh, Whirlwinds. I think he can set up for the following turn if he plays Death Spike. Mm -hmm. And he's still safe from Force of Nature Savage Roar. He's not safe from Force of Nature oh, wow. 2 Savage Roars, I believe. He's going for the face here, setting up for the Gromash. I and mean, what can Kano do? Well, he has the Ancient of Lore, so that way he feels like he can heal himself out of range. Uh, but he, yeah, it's actually not quite out of range, I believe. He right. can go to 14, 15 with the hero power effectively if he does clear the uh, the Dread Corsair, but there's still both that Armor Smith and the Grom. With right. So. Gromash is 14 damage. Yeah, so he's going to draw for some answers. Yeah, that's right. You just assume your opponent doesn't have Gromash mm -hmm. and just play on your, um, you know, Yeah, that's, that's strategy. the thing. In this position, you have, he can't win wow. if his opponent does have Grom. And he has to play, so it gives him the best chance to win in a situation that he doesn't. And unfortunately for No here, Grom can wait no longer. And this will be game one going to Tice. Wow, very impressive winning another game off Patreon. I don't think his Patreon is has defeated at all. Yeah. Pa Patreon has not dropped a single game yep. all tournament long. Mm. Patron's back. Yeah. It was never away. <laughs> Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> he, went on, he went on vacation for two weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now everyone is back to getting in here. Well, we're in a that's tavern right. here at the Hearthstone World Championship, and that's where the Grim Patrons live, really. It's true. And, you know, it's not to be uh, underestimated at all. It's still a very viable deck. And as demonstrated, it happened to get a matchup, which we feel like is pretty good for the patron, mm. especially when it starts off um, drawing cards like that, having weapons for removal, and then following it up with Battle Rage to, to fill that hand. You just saw with plenty of resources, he was able to pick the right tool at the right time and set up for a very easy uh, uh, kill. Not only that, but it felt like even if he didn't have Grom, he was still in a really good position to go for patrons mm -hmm. uh, in the following turn. So it's not like... Uh, he was out of options and needed to win right there. And it really comes back to the deck building stage, right? I mean, Tice predicted that a lot of people are going to bring Druid. And I mean, about 13 people brought Druid, right? So bringing Patron was a very good call on his part. Yes, I believe 12 people brought Druid. Okay, um, okay. But lot, it's still, that's, that's, that's three-fourths of the <laughs> three competition, fourths. which mm -hmm. is very likely based off of um, just 16 players that are here. But we only have 12 at the moment. Four players were eliminated yesterday, and four will be eliminated tomorrow. And then we have the uh, the field cut in half from that point on. I, w I do want to draw attention to the rest of the lineups here. I think it's interesting that you brought up that he targets Druid with the Patron, but he also feels like with Priest in his lineup that he just wants to kill that aggressive strategies. Yeah, that Tyson's coming. strategy coming in, he, he said that he felt like uh, the... Asian regions, both APAC and China, tended to play more aggressive decks, and based on the way that the groups work, he wasn't going to play against other players from Europe who he believed favor control decks. Sure. So he felt like his best way to at least advance as far as possible in the tournament was to create his lineup specifically targeted against aggressive decks. Yeah, that'll be his uh, primary motivation to be able to take out that region, and also his primary motivation to play the game. We got a chance to sit down and chat with him a little bit about that. The motivation of me is, it's something that was always already with me in every game I played, uh, even if it was just uh, football or just a small game with friends. I just always look for perfection. I play it for fun. Yeah, it's just how my personality is. I'm just enjoying everything I do and that is the biggest motivation for me now. All right, well, Tice coming in here, uh, feeling like he's just gonna have fun and do his thing. Although Maybe he's a little serious right now. He looks like he's not having as much fun as... <laughs> it, it, it's fun to win. So, And he's been doing a lot of that lately. $250,000 is pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> I would enjoy that. It would be. It's, uh, it's a lot of money for winning Hearthstone. So uh, these guys are definitely going to gear up for it. What do you guys think? Who will win? Hashtag APAC for Asia Pacific win or hashtag EU for the EU win. You know, Tice is featured in the national uh, newspapers in the Netherlands, really, because wow. his accomplishments as a, a Dutch player is, you know, not something to be overlooked. It's been a while since the Dutch players have been able to have such a strong showing in games. You know, you guys have Grubby, for example, who's over at Peers of the Storm, or Rotterdam from StarCraft, or Hearthstone in StarCraft as well. Um, all these guys, ha usually, you know, they're very proud of it, and he makes a lot of headlines because of how successful he is in Hearthstone. I mean, it's, it's great to see how uh, esports has really grown in, in, in recent sports. years. Yep. Uh, the, the, the rise of live streaming of Twitch and the sort of uh, the fact that the greater community at large has really <coughs> embraced gaming much more, uh, much more seriously. That's right. Mm -hmm. It ain't much if it ain't Dutch. Let's go into game two. Tice is going Freeze Mage versus Druid. This is a really t tough matchup. 
But yesterday we did see, uh, you know, Glimmer of Hope for Freeze Mage against Druid. Right. It's just one of those really tricky things where there's just so much pressure being built up. I think you were casting along with me, right, Amos? Yeah, I was. Um, you know, that Freeze Mage, technically speaking, got really unlucky, I guess. You had to draw all your secrets. You don't want to do that, right? You want to draw answers to the first few minions, especially the Dernas Aspirant. You really want that Frostbolt, right? Um, because otherwise, it's just going to stick there. It's a Wild Growth plus a creature. You know, that, that swing is just really, really high. Interesting. So, um, right now, Nun doesn't have much play because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to use the Keeper of the Grove on something like Loot Hoarder or just damage the phase unless he's going to be pushing for lethal. In this matchup, Keeper of the Grove is generally most important for silencing Doomsday. Uh, the Freeze Mage that can use various freeze effects like Frost Nova most, most typically uh, and Doomsayer to prevent you from attacking into the Doomsayer kill our creatures. If you have a Keeper of the Grove, you can silence that Doomsayer and then suddenly you get another turn with all those minions in the well, innervating out the Ancient of Lore gets him very deep into his deck as the turns progress because he wants to get into more threats. This Wild Growth is not yeah. exactly what Kano's looking for here. The uh, That's usually what you want to play in the early turns, though here, you know, he doesn't actually have a great turn uh, at six Mana Crystals next, so he may just use that ramp next turn to, to give him more options later on. Uh, over at Taisha's side, uh, Kona Kona is an interesting tech card. Uh, we see players I use the second that. antique heal bot, like purple, instead, and you know, sometimes like Pyroblast even. Um, and Kona Kona is just saying that, oh, okay, I think the uh, meta is pretty aggressive, uh, lots of mid range decks, so I want to, you know, just stall for that one more turn with that extra freeze effect. Yeah, he's got a lot of freezes chained back to back. Um, he's got Cone of Cold, and he's got Blizzard and Flame Strike, so <clears throat> he'll be able to whittle down the board slowly and but surely. It's one of those things where, sure, you want to kill a Dynastus Aspirant, you want to deny his opponent from playing another 7-drop minion, but, you know, because he didn't develop anything this turn, you know, that's kind of what Types is hoping for, is like, at worst, nothing happens. And, or at best, sorry, nothing happens, and that's exactly what went on. Yeah, and here we see uh, Kano choose to play one copy of the two Wild Growths in his hand. Uh, this is basically because if you do get to 10 mana with Wild Growth, you can instead cash it in for a new card, uh, and the... The mana curve in Kano's hand is really uh, stops at seven. He doesn't have, uh, yes. he's not looking to play uh, the Savage Roar Force of Nature combo yet. So he'd rather just hit his seven drop next turn, even if his Donassus Aspirant dies, and then save the second Wild Growth uh, to possibly get him an additional resource later in the game. Well, um, there are options for Tice to coin out this Emperor Thorson. Now he has Alex Straws in the hand as well. I wonder if that motivates him to make this hand cheaper at all. I mean, it is really convenient when you can do things like Alex Straza Frost Nova or Antonitis Frost Nova with some extra change. Yeah, the, the fact that he also has Frostbolt and Ice Lance in his hand, reducing the cost of your cheaper cards is generally the most powerful thing with uh, with sure. Antoni or rather with Emperor in a lot of cases, because with Antonitis, just where I was getting at, uh, it, it allows you to play multiple spells in a turn and generate multiple fireballs. Uh, Alex Straza is another one of those powerful things to reduce because the ability to actually cast that with anything else in the same turn can be very game swinging. And it's also a good uh, timing too, right? Ty just knows that uh, next turn Kano only has 8 mana, so he's not going to get his Ice Block popped with the combo. So this is really the only turn the Emperor could come down. Yeah, that's a really good point. I, I guess it could if it had th two Savage Roars, but that's one of those sprint scenarios like, well, do I really play around that? Versus do I go for more, what's more reasonable? Now Tice is, uh, you know, similar position where he legitimately could get popped next turn, and he doesn't have Ice Barrier. He's only has six mana too. His opponent will be hitting um, in just a couple of turns here. The threat of Force Nature Savage from the hand, even though he can freeze the board. So he do? has to be very careful. To He's gonna do? choose to maybe use the Blizzard over the Kona Cold because uh, Kona Cold is cheaper. You can combo it with um, other things, whereas Blizzard, you normally just play Blizzard and can't really play anything else. So that's a Pretty good move there. I like it. An unnerfed Cone of Cold. <laughs> unnerfed Frost Nova. <laughs> Just like the good old days, man. I don't know if I describe it as the good old days. It, it is in the in the lens <laughs> of every person who who just managed to survive that patch, right? They're like, they miss every deck possible. They're like, yeah, I, I miss uh, Miracle Rogue. And, and now people are like, I miss Old Patron Warrior. Right. Happened already, man. <laughs> every time a card gets changed, it still gets played. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's like weird. It's, it's as if it's as if changing this card was a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> balance changes, guys. 
Well, Tice, um, I mean, he is playing a deck that's gotten, you know, the nerf back quite a few times, so he definitely knows what that feels like. But it's still very powerful. Uh, Freeze Mage has been a deck that, that has had a good amount of success in this tournament. We did see, uh, I believe Oskako is playing Freeze Mage as well and also advanced. Yeah. Well, this is unfortunate for Tice. He can't kill the Emperor Thorson, which is going to make oh. things really cheap. <laughs> Milhouse Mana Storm, I mean, it kind of doesn't matter because of Flame Strike, yeah. but it's still one of the things like, oh, really? I mean, this is this is one of those situations where the, the sort of nature of Freeze Mage is really demonstrated. In, in many cases, a Millhouse coming out of Shredder is an enormous event that really shifts the course of a game. Sure. But here, Ooh. it's just, it doesn't really matter what that minion is, as long as it, it also dies to Flame Strike because it's frozen anyway. Well, that's interesting. Uh, Kanoa can actually could have popped the uh, Ice Block using uh, Force of Nature and Keeper silencing his, uh, one of his 5-5s, five or even the Ancient Floor, yeah. to do the rest of the Damage, but you know he prefers to you know get a bigger board first, and that just may may give Tice the time he needs to set up for a lethal. Yeah, that's a really good point, Amaz. Um, one of the things that you don't really intuitively think about Keep of the Grove, because you usually save it for Silence on the Doomsayer, the Doomsayer or Silence right. on Mad Scientist to push for lethals. Mm. But you don't think about silencing your own minions who's frozen because you exactly. do remove that freeze effect. And that's why Keep with the Growth, like Kibler mentioned, is pretty much the key card in this matchup. You just have to remember all the possibilities. Can Tice generate enough damage if he went aggressive? He does have Ice Block up, mm -hmm. but I guess he doesn't feel I like the case because he doesn't have Fireballs. He only has Frostbolt and Ice Lance. Yeah. And the thing is, the Druid does have three armor, right? So effectively, he's sitting at 18 True. health. And right now, your hand does not have 18 damage. So Tysh might have to find a you know, different path to draw more cards, perhaps, first. Yeah, he's going to take a, a more defensive approach. Playing the loot order, trying to draw out. And plus, loot order can wear out some of the armor. And I think, <clears throat> in his mind, the Emperor survived long enough that the Druid will play whatever it wants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, right now, uh, Kev can actually play Ancient of Lore and Force of Nature in the same turn, yeah. which is not usually something you're, you, you see very often. Ooh, second Ancient wow. of... Oh, sorry. Second Keeper of the Grove. That's a that's a very big draw here because it allows him to uh, potentially use his, his first Keeper to do something like Silence if he really wants to uh, right. on one of his own minions uh, and still have the second one to potentially use as a, uh, a effectively a removal for Doomsayer. The only consideration <laughs> Kanoa right now has possibly is to not flood his board mm -hmm. such that uh, Force of Nature actually cannot summon the Trians, yeah, right? Sure. That, that becomes a big problem in a lot of times. Well, right now, I, I actually think that, that Kano's uh, board is strong enough. There's not much incentive for him to play anything. Sure. Uh, Tice basically has to freeze or destroy everything on this board. Anything he could play would be vulnerable to a Flame Strike or another Frost Nova. Uh, look, oh. He may be playing that Keeper, though. Yes, and he <clears throat> also activates the Ice Barrier, which gives Tyson the ability to play a second one I must safeguard if he ends up drawing it. And he does go for the Silence play to set it up, but he does flood his board a little bit higher, just like you said, Amaz. Right. He can't actually go for Force of Nature Savage in full damage. I mean, if this this board is big enough, there's no there's no need to play a Force of Nature onto this board True. Uh, to actually uh, end up pushing enough damage. If, if this is a board that is going to get Force of Nature, uh, it's going to need to have had some things cleared off or everything frozen, I guess. That's actually, that actually is the, the, the big issue is if you were to get, uh, well, if you were to get Blizzarded here, because I believe both Frost Novas are gone. Yeah, both Frost Novas. And uh, one Blizzard is gone. So there has to be a second Blizzard, uh, and then he would need the Force of Nature to, to, to go through with, uh, with all the... Oh, um, looking at this, very good position by Kano to put the weakest minion in the middle, Light such that Kona Cold. Cold. Yeah. yeah, Kona Cold is actually pretty weak right now. Um, Taj is still counting if he still has enough damage if he Alex Strazas this turn. If he um, Alex Strazas, he'll be able to fireball the Frostbolt Ice Lance. And he's going to take this risk to try and see if he can end the game, but this is what Noah's was doing by saving the second Ancient of Lore. He's going to be able to heal himself right back up. And he's going to be reliant on drawing the second fireball. That's what Tice is really hoping for. Second fireball to end the game. But that's where No kept this Ancient of Lore to heal him back up to 17 or 18. And Tice will have to have a little bit extra help here to survive. And uh, Kano has been using, we, we saw he had generated a lot of armor from that hero power. That's one of the, the powerful things that Druid deck can do in this matchup. It's not necessarily super intuitive be because the, the interaction between Alex Straza and uh, armor is that it only reduces your, your total health pool, so the armor all remains, and that uh, created a, a big cushion for Kano here. Mm -hmm. 
Reducing uh, Taisha's health to two is also pretty key because the Keeper of the Grove can actually, you know, ping him down. Mm -hmm. Uh, you never know that your whole board's gonna be frozen and your hero is also gonna be frozen as well. He also he does have force of nature, so as long as one tree end can get through, he might be in a good spot. I like the positioning a lot again to make sure at least each of wards can take excessive damage from the Kona Fold. Second med or scientist doesn't really do much here. Or it's the first med scientist, excuse me. The Thurston has been in play forever. <laughs> it's zero cost Keeper of the Grove, two <laughs> cost Words of Nature, wow. zero cost Shade of Nats Travis. You could play it all. What he needs is a questing adventurer. And then just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. questing adventurer, yeah, play yeah. my entire hand. I mean, he kind of has oh, a very yeah. slow, he has a he has a uh, late bloomer with the questing shade. adventurer with the Shade of Nats Travis. <laughs> right. he's, he's on a very, very long and deliberate quest. That's right. To protect Nats Travis. Yes. To protect his honor. It's the journey mm. of no chomp. I don't get it. Nah, no, uh, me neither. <laughs> okay, well, in Japan, Japan they use, or Japanese, they like refer to people as like uh, an honorary title. So okay. if you like, no sama, no senpai, no chan. <laughs> no senpai. No senpai. It's, it's less funny when you guys don't understand it, but it's okay. All I know about senpai it was is that he occasionally in notices <laughs> people. That's, yeah. that's my only experience. <laughs> Oh, Taishi gets a second block popped, and uh, he has no more immunities. <laughs> and this, this Doctor Boom actually means that uh, a, a blizzard from Tais is likely lethal to himself because of the Boombots. <laughs> uh, it will be, guaranteed, <laughs> because of the the Boombots guaranteed at least true. two damage. Sure, true. but you can play something. Could, so yeah, that... you can play Acolyte of Pain yeah. or that Mad Scientist, but uh, I don't think there's any real way out of this for Tais yeah. now. He's facing down... A huge board with not really much to deal with it, and uh, he's out of ice blocks. Yeah, this has been a very tricky match from the beginning, but it looks like it is mm. game over for this one, and we're going to have to go to game number three. Right. I mean, Tice does have lethal feed fireball his own yeah. face, but that's about it, and he uh, decides to concede, and uh, we're going to have an even series one game to one. That's yeah, right. I guess the start of the match was actually the Ancient of War, uh, making Flame Strike not able to kill here the uh, whole board from Kano. The Ancient of War is generally a card that's... Wait, you're calling him Kano now? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Amaz? Uh, you you, you changed my mind. Trolling. We're trolling. <laughs> we've all, we've all, you are trolling so the, hard. The Innkeeper and, and, and each other, we're all just confusing everyone. When he wins, his Kano. Uh, it's Kano. Okay. No or Kano. Yeah. It's no. I, I would, I would, I'm just going to go with no, because it sets up more puns that way. Oh. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the remaining classes. Now that Freeze Mage, uh, or sorry, now that Druid's out of the way, um, there's Paladin and this Zulok, which is still two classes that I think the Freeze Mage is excellent against. Right. Um, to a certain degree, I think the, 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 uh, the Priest is pretty good against it, too. Although, I think it's yet to be seen the actual... I, I still think uh, the Paladin has a very good edge over things like the Priest if... Um, you know, because it has a better chance of curving out yeah. much more aggressively. The priest definitely needs to play stuff uh, every single turn, right? And um, they also need their minions to stick around for Valen's Chosen, perhaps. Uh, there was one match where um, hmm, Tice plays against a Druid player, and he had an option to innervate a Druid Claw or a Emperor. And, um, you know, he chose to do the Emperor route, and then Valen's Chosen came out uh, with the, on the Dark Cultist and punished him. Whereas everybody in the... Um, in the viewing room was like, oh, if he charges the Druid of the Claw and removes the Priest Minion, then he actually does not get the Valence option, uh, Valence chosen option available. So usually it's better to just clear Priest Minion's board out of the way. Well, it's certainly easier, easier decision when you do a full information. That oh, there that's is true. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, okay, so we're being told that it's Kano, okay. the although the really Innkeeper says us. no. Hmm. But it's, it's his Scottish accent. But uh, uh, all right, can you, can you actually? <laughs> I, I have a, I have a accent, question for you, Kibler. When, when there's um, an animation in a picture, what do you call that? Online, yeah. In a what, it, like a, the file. Oh, file. you mean you mean GIF, which is not GIF. That, thank you, oh. thank you, Kibler. <laughs> I like you a lot better. It's just how how consonants sound it work. It's a GIF. It, I, I call it GIF. Oh, oh my, uh, Maz, right. Thank well, you so much for casting. You are your entitled will to your no longer be needed, even if wow. your opinion is wrong. Kaepler. That's yeah. How, that's that's how a K sound is. <laughs> Get wrecked. Well, um, Kano plays the shield and minibot and the knife juggler in sequence because he wants the minibot to stick around. It's higher chance that it'll survive because of the divine shield. Mm -hmm. That is um, general sequencing. And if it does survive, the knife juggler 
Uh, it will get some bonus attack from the muscle for battle. And this is the sort of draw that uh, Paladin deck really needs in order to put enough pressure on Freeze Mage early on. Mm -hmm. uh, Freeze Mage is very, very strong if it does get to the late game. The Paladin deck doesn't really have uh, much direct damage. That's right. really great ways to deal with Doomsayer, so it needs to get in a lot of damage early. Uh, and we do see the Lotheb in uh, you Kino's know, hand yes. that may help uh, continue to, to create a, an opening for him in the mid game. It will, but I do see uh, one thing that's pretty important is that uh, Tice does have turn five before No does. does. So which means he's going to hit the Frost Nova Doomsayer to stall out the board mm -hmm. preemptively yeah. before the Lothab. Yeah, that's a really good observation because people could go like, why don't uh, Tice use Corn of Cold right now and reduce the damage, right? But uh, he does have the turn five guaranteed so that Lothab can't mess his turn up. Though, uh, Kano does have Pilot Shredder he can play this turn, which would give him a minion left on the board after the Doomsayer. It's one of the one of the powerful things about the, the Death Rattle minions in the, in this sort of matchup. Or That's any right. matchup, really. <laughs> Are we uh, confusing things, by the way, that uh, maybe Kano is playing um, uh, mid-range oh, Paladin? Mid so, yeah, he is certainly okay. playing mid-range Paladin. Right. I, I was under the pressure he was in the Secrets Paladin, but I must have been dismembering. <clears throat> I mean, he did have a very aggressive start that is uh, a bit more, a uh, bit more typical for the uh, the Secret Paladin deck. Right. But that uh, that Harrison Jones, that Murloc Knight, those are mid range cards. And we do have a lot of Paladins in this uh, World World Championships. Yeah, it, it, it so is it's a class. Right. It is a class that that has a lot of diversity in terms of the the particular strategic direction that players have taken. That lay on hands is actually a pretty significant draw for. You no, know, it's not necessarily. Uh, important right now, but uh, as they get to the late game, uh, it's one of the ways that the uh, Paladin can answer the Alexstrasza burst damage combo. Yeah, it's dependent on another Ooh. thing too, is that your opponent, uh, that, that you have a board that Lay on Hands will stall for, because the Paladin, um, some of the, the dangers is that not only are you unable to really like finish the game with damage, but sometimes you can't heal out of range, and Lay on Hands is really important for that. That, that Cut Purse is a very interesting uh, pickup from the Shredder here. Whoa, it actually wow. enables Dr. Boom this turn. That's really oh. good. He gets a coin, and he just coin out Dr. Boom. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Tice, you see yeah. a little, little nod <laughs> smile from Tice here. He's played two coins this yeah. game. Yeah. He's rich. <laughs> he might have a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, oh, sorry, I meant to say a hundred thousand coins. Hundred thousand, hundred thousand. But that's not coins. actually how many coins. Well, you. Oh, could, okay. You there get, it is. There, there's get, a dollar you know, coin. Dollars. Yeah. So uh, thank you for backing me up here. Yeah, you know, they, they exist. <laughs> you're a great support. If you're if you're if you're in a lot of other countries, most of their smaller denomination. <laughs> Currency pieces are actually cool. So. All right, well, uh, I will play Overwatch with you. You're a great support, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in Overwatch, oh, though. I'm real bad at that uh, game. <laughs> all right. This is kind of an awkward spot for Tice. He can he can try to say Cone of Cold Doomsayer, but this is this is a, a point in the game where, where you're not expecting to be facing down this much of a threat. Mm. That that cut purse allowing the Doctor Boom to come out early, mm -hmm. even after Kano had gotten a strong start thanks to his initial coin, sure. uh, putting Tice in a really awkward position. The other thing to consider is what are you going to be following up after this Doomsayer? And right now his only follow up is Loot Order. Um, normally you want a Doomsayer to also do another thing of setting up for Alex Straza or Antonidas, so that way you get a free board to develop something. Kind of on the other hand, he's not happy to see that. Is, yeah, is, he yeah. doesn't have anything to stick around, like Pilot Shredder to drop onto the board and at least play something. Right. Right. Seeing the second Doomsayer come out of Tice uh, actually makes Sylvanas a, a possible play on future turns. One of the one of the dangerous Let things uh, with, with Sylvanas can be, you know, you could potentially play a Doomsayer and just kill your own Doomsayer. Give your opponent the, the or rather kill your opponent kill Sylvanas, Sylvanas yes. which, 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 which ultimately kills your Doomsayer and blows up the entire board on okay. their turn. Yeah, makes sense. Well, if Tash didn't play the Doomsayer last turn, um, Kano could have you know played a low threat and potentially be very disastrous Ooh. for Tice. So I, I like yeah. that play. Oh yeah, now. absolutely. I, I agree that, that with with Tice's play, it just uh, creates an interesting dynamic with, with the Sylvanas that uh, that Kano jumps through. That heal bot was pretty important. It helps him to <clears throat> help address the, whatever comes out on the board much easier, and he gets it out of the way when it's normally pretty mana inefficient mm -hmm. relative to other plays like Blizzard, for example, or if you want to fireball ping. Mm -hmm. So I like that um, you know Tyson chose to go for that. It's very easy to get sucked into the I need to draw like a ton of cards, Freeze Mage, and then you realize, mm -hmm. well, uh, I wish I had more mana to use all these cards. And one of the things uh, in this particular matchup is that you're just looking to buy time. 
Uh, against Paladin, you're not really scared of getting bursted down, so you don't need to save something like a anti keelbot until after an ice block pop or anything like that. Uh, Paladin just does its damage in these increments normally Let through minion combat think. on its turn. So this just will buy Tice the time he needs to find the key cards to actually get his damage combo. Yeah. So over at Kenosa, he wants to figure out a way to put the most pressure on the board such that Tice does not have that time. And this is a, a little awkward for him. He has the Lotha, which is very strong, but he's going into Tice's turn 9. And turn 9 is is a point in the game when the Freeze Mage has no sort of a naturally strong left that is is, uh, is minion-based with Alex Straza. We see that Tice doesn't have that Alex Straza, but uh, right. it's got to be what he's keeping in mind. Sure. That's a very easy clear for it. There's a lot of damage in the hand, by the way, for Tice. He's got two Fireballs, a Frostbolt, and an Ice Lance, uh, which comes up to about 19 damage. Right. Um, Assuming you just play that and not pain. So, if he can get Alex Straza, the pain train will start coming, right? It'll be really difficult for Paladin to constantly stop it, but he's got two of the best in stopping that with Lothab and Leon Hands. And this is, <laughs> when, when the Freeze Mage is just attacking your face with minions, it's a very strange position to be in. Right. And you have to be kind of afraid, you know, okay, well, how much damage can they really do next turn? He can do, he can do a lot. He's got uh, at least 14 damage from one turn. Yeah. Plus the, the five on board. Impractical to say the least, but you know, with, if Emperor Thorson ever comes down, that's something you have to be really mindful of as well. Yeah, if Emperor Thorson comes out, uh, you throw all the math aside because um, the maximum damage you can deal from your hand mm -hmm. as a free smash with no Emperor is 21. Um, with the yes. uh, Thalnos and like lots of Ice Lances and stuff like that. So as long as Kano is above 21, he knows he's not going to die. But then if Emperor comes out, well, suddenly you can just unload a lot of spells and, um, you know, it goes upwards to 30 plus damage. Well, there's a couple of uh, ways to go about this from Tyson's point of view. He can use some of his AoE, but which is the best to save slash use here? Yeah, Flamestrike seems like it's really clean. You can also kill the Sylvanas off the king and, uh, you know, just buy those extra turns. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more mana. It's very clean. The only thing about uh, you know using Blizzard is that uh, Blizzard gives you time to like develop Acolyte and do other things, but I guess you you just care about making sure that the board doesn't get too is strong. It, is it time for the March oh. of the Murlocs? Well, you just saw a flame the strike. Double, the double, yeah, double <laughs> Murloc Knight coming out. Let's see two ward leaders. That would be exciting. Oh dear. I just want to see more <laughs> Murloc Knights. Even one ward leader is great. Oh, 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 okay. Two of the better Murlocs. For yeah, sure. that was that was, uh, that was really good for. Uh, for Kano there, the two Murloc Knights picking up some some strong uh, strong oh pals. Well, he does pick up Emperor Thorson, but he's in danger of potentially dying or getting his ice block popped. All right. What's scary is that if you play Blizzard right now, um, more Murlocs are going to come out, and you know we have there's two options to charge, so uh, mm. Kano can still put on some damage against Tice. I don't know if he has much of a choice, though. I feel like this yeah. Acolyte and Blizzard play is his best chance to make sure that he can guarantee survival. Uh, Stiflin's Spirit Walker, by the way, is... Silt. 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 He's in Silt. <laughs> like in, in the, his name in is the... also No, but who no, who's keeping count? <laughs> <laughs> the, the Silphin Spirit Walker draws a card whenever a Murloc dies, so you're often in this catch-22 where you don't want to give him cards, you don't really want him to gain more Murlocs, but you want to kill Murloc Knight. Um, that's why it's really problematic. Ideally, you kill the Spirit Walker first and then kill the Murloc Knight, but you usually can't do one before the other. It is the most uh, costly Murloc, so, you know, mana-wise, mana it's the best one. And what, An interesting thing here uh, for Kano is that if he does use his hero power, he will get two more Murlocs, but also fill up his board. And if he does fill up his board, he won't be able to potentially play that Lotha in his hand, think. which could be a, a key uh, a key figure in potentially preventing Tice from being able to actually kill him. True, true that. But the thing is, like, you'd never want to play Lothab into an Alex Straza turn because right. it'll be wasted, right? Oh! Oh! All right, fatigue oh. him out. Start killing Murlocs. Wow. That's right. <laughs> well, Frost Nova would be a really big draw in the next um, turn here for Tice. Oh, that's still a lot of damage. How much damage is that in his hand? So he has, uh, seven, he has 19 before. That's 23. Oh, no, 18. 18 24. plus 24. Is that actually, does he have lethal Yeah, 23 two with the um, hero power. He might just, like, Emperor Thorson. He can also, well, like... If he just then... Fireball, Fireball, mm. like, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice... Or... <laughs> fireball, Fireball, Ping. Next turn, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, Ping. Is that just lethal? Yeah, that with is the lethal. Attack? But then there is a lay on hands for Kano to... That's um, true, that's true. Right. You know, 
kind of make that really awkward. And uh, Kano also can just sacrifice, if that Acolyte stays right, in play, one, one. he can right. sacrifice the 1-1 one, one into it and play low them. Mm -hmm. So it is it is an, an Ooh, awkward like spot. It. Suicide the Acolyte, so you can't uh, play low them. That would be very next level. Although I don't think he has enough damage then, right? If he has to use his ping this turn. Right. Oh, there's oh my though. goodness. That's a lot. Yep. That was really unfortunate because now, even though Kano can sacrifice a minion onto the Alistrazo to play Lothab, uh, Tice can still play an 8 mana Ice Block to mm -hmm. avoid lethal for one more turn. Right, but then you play. So he, he, he kills off his board, plays Lothab, pops the block. Mm -hmm. Then he. He also has to kill Alistrazo. Oh, that's a good point. Does well, he have enough it, of both? It shouldn't be too hard with the Consecrates in his hand. Uh, one, he has one, two, three. He, he can, 10, I mean, 12. Just the. Uh, it's just tricky. Mark, it's actually Mark really tricky. Can kill all yeah, using double consecration should be fine. But oh, I guess you can't play Lothab if you do that. Right. right. Oh. It, yeah, you have to assume your opponent doesn't have the damage. So you have to kill Alexstrasza because you don't have a taunt. Maybe you rely on more Murlocs. <laughs> oh, yeah, draw some cards. It's more Oh, my goodness. True Silver is a pretty good pretty one. Good. He's gonna overdraw at some point if he keeps killing. <laughs> yeah, so that's why he killed one of his draw cards. Yeah. Yeah. So the True silver actually allows him to, uh, I believe, he pop the pop the block. He pop the block and heal. He has 10, yeah. 11, 12, 13. I think he may be a little bit short. Yeah, he's, he's actually Ooh, that's one really damage short wow. here. really big. Because now that's Emperor Thorson comes down. Lotha's been used. And he's gonna have Thanos. What? Yeah, oh, that dear. is the. Uh, Okay, hold Black on. Blackjack situation. Hold on. <laughs> we, we have to count. We have to count. So, um, two fireballs will be three. A so he can play everything. Yeah, he can play everything. So yeah, two fireballs is 12. The ice the ice stuff is 11. And because Thalnos is five 13. spells, it deals five damage. So it's 28. I plus, a, can he even squeeze in a, a ping? Oh, man. He's going to ping the face, by the way. Yeah, I think he can actually squeeze in the ping. And uh, Kano-chan will be going up to 26. With the, uh, Leon that is going to be attack. plenty for Tice, unless there is a, a secret wild card that we're not anticipating off the top of the deck here for the Paladin. Wolf Ram Shield. I mean, <laughs> Wolf Ram. Wolf Ram Shield. <laughs> yeah, or one. Kazan Mystic. Kazan Mystic would be really, really good. So did he? I'm, I'm just trying to trying to figure out uh, if Kano could have popped the block last turn as well, which would have prevented this. I think he had to make a choice, either pop the block or kill what Alex Straza. Did he not have enough damage to do both? And play Lothar at the same and time. There's just right. so many things he needs to do just then. Well, does he... Yeah, it's a really, really awkward position for him. And now, yeah, Tysus has... He just has yes. basically infinite damage in his hand. Yeah. Close enough. He has to swing with the True Silver, too, right here. Yep. Yeah, just restore he the two health. Something that you have to be careful not to... Give the immunity so that it denies you the ability to yeah. attack. And once again, once you play Emperor, you throw all the map aside. This is way more than the possible 21 damage. Yes. And, um, wow, okay, that was yeah, enough. Yeah. He's got enough damage, by the way. <laughs> I think it's actually, he just has like 28, is it? Yeah, yeah he's 28. got 28. And we, I think he can also squeeze in a pain, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so insane. Like so he has 29. And he, it takes a six card combination to do it, by the way. Tice is going to take a 2 1 lead, getting one game away from going to the round of eight. Wow. You see, you know, just sort of shaking his head there. Really? All of that? All right. I guess he's dead. Yeah, but there's how many cards are even left in the Breach Mage's deck? It's actually oh, yeah, more likely he has some of yeah. these cards. And, and this is a big, a, a big part of the reason why Freeze Mage is generally considered such a favorite over mid range Paladin. Uh, you're not able to get in that much damage early. You, you get to these points in the game where you have to decide between things like, okay, you know, do I pop his block or do I do this? Do I play Lotheb? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't do it all. You only have so much mana. Uh, but if you have Emperor Thorson, you can do a lot more with your mana, as uh, Tice just showed. Yeah, looking right. back, uh, the Alex Straza uh, draw was really, really it was fortunate huge. It was really for huge. Tice. He needed that exactly at that moment. Um, maybe like one or two turns later, the board would have been much different. Right, he had to choose between Alex Straza and something else. Exactly. Uh, which would have been too slow relative to how much damage he wanted to do. Yeah, Kano had some, some excellent uh, excellent recruits off of his Warlock Knight, but the Alex Straza was, uh, was enough to turn it around. All right. Well, uh, Kano needs to turn around. He's been two in a row in order to, uh, to come back into this series. Uh, but before we go into the break and the game, let's go ahead and show you about what Kano will do with the prize money if he can advance to the round of eight and pick up those paychecks. Well, I don't think I'm going to think about it. 
パックを買うとかいいかもしれませんね<笑>私の一番好きなカードはアンステーブルポータルで、まあ、理由は使うだけで勝てるからです Thank you for supporting me Hope I will win That's right, he might be able to even afford a full collection as the rumor goes <laughs> if he wins b l i s s o n e A full warrior. golden collection. <laughs> but that's usually what you imply when you say full collection. Right. Uh, but who needs a full collection when you have golden unstable portal? Yeah, that's like every part of the game. You it could be anything. Yeah, that's true. It could be gold then, Deathwing. And then for awesome spells, just that's have right. a golden spell slinger. Yeah. I, I, whenever I craft gold cards, I, if I have a deck, I want to I get gold cards for the deck. Okay. Any card that I have in the deck that produces other cards, That's I right. craft first. It's just higher, it's higher value. Because <laughs> you get the gold card, and then you get yep. the other gold cards that card produces. Ysera, Chromagus, mm -hmm. mostly because they're dragons. Okay. Dragons appreciate gold. Nice. They horse. <laughs> That's true. That's But true. they also produce other cards. Very thematic there. Yeah. Also, I really like Blinktron, because even if you have a regular Blinktron. Well, it's also just a pro. <laughs> It's true, Blinktron. but but Blinktron, even if, it's, a golden version. even if it's not golden, it creates golden weapons. That's true. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. Because it's a Blinktron. Oh, now I get it. There or it a Blinktron. Well, that is thematically appropriate. They, they got to it first. Uh, but wow, that oh. is quite the early game <laughs> okay. hand for Tice. Almost as board dominant as it gets. Yeah. Uh, the one thing is that he doesn't have a second dragon for Twilight Wealth to be benefiting off of it, but it's okay. He can hold on to that and be a trigger for Twilight Guardian or Wormer's Agent. Right. And when we first, uh, first saw Tice play the other day, we commented on the fact that he does have Zombie Chow in his Dragon Priest deck. Dragon Priest is a deck that already pretty heavily punishes aggressive strategies because of how, how many Uh, high value minions it has at each drop. Oh, uh, and, wow. and Tice has even included the zombie chat for, for additional uh, additional early game. Yeah. At first, I actually thought Tice cut off the uh, North Shire Cleric because he does run a lot of one drops, mm -hmm. right? But I guess like the North Shire Cleric just gives so much value in terms of like refilling cards. Yes. Uh, otherwise, the priest, the Dragon Priest, they don't run Thought Steel, mm. so they have to have some way of you know cycling for more cards. So I have a question. If Tice chooses to be pretty greedy, like playing double North Shire, mm -hmm. would Do you think Kano would consider playing like a quality on yeah, that board absolutely. just to like deny any card draw? Absolutely. And I think that's a great punish for the uh, double North Shark Clerk because there isn't any health to heal if uh, minions are in one health. Yeah. See Man. if he decides to do that. And that could be one of the factors that just would be able injured? to help him win the game. Although Tice looks like he's just deciding whether or not he wants to go for one Northshire or two. Oh, I like that. So that way, the second one is a surprise element yeah. of yeah. playing out turn three and healing. Not to yeah, not to mention yeah, you can do that. I, mean, I actually think three. that that it may be correct for. Although he did just pick up an other piece keeper. I was gonna say even on this board, just playing quality because a quality reduces all these minions' uh, health to to one. Then the must for battle weapon alone can help pick them off and the the. Uh, Recruits themselves sure. won't be vulnerable to just getting picked off and mm. healing. It is still vulnerable to Valence Chosen. It's true. That's true. Or even something that taunts it, like Wormrest Agent, if he picked it up. Okay. But yeah. he would—he would have played it at least probably on turn two if that was the case. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Let's go ahead and go uh, ahead. Oh, oh, well, this is going to end very badly for yes. Kano here. He is going to wow. lose all of his minions. Probably. He gets answered and by the board. Yeah. And his shredder is going to get contested. Job. Tice is, he is not messing around. He he does not want to die to Leopard. Yeah. Six one drops. Yeah. And one of the weaknesses of Priest is the early game, right? Uh, so there you go. Lots of one drops. Also makes Valence Chosen that much more consistent. It's not like even it. just the one drops of Priest. It's the fact that if you go for one drops, um, outside of the North Shire Cleric, where is your draw? That's true. I guess he does have Azure Drake, but it's like refilling the hand here while having that board is such a big difference. Like, Look at the fact that they have almost the same amount of cards, but one person has four minions on board yeah. that draws even more cards. And here, this is just still a yeah, tremendous position for Tice here, even with right. that Shredder coming down. Yeah, these North Shark Clerks have been Arcane Intellects, basically, just drawing two cards on this turn afterwards. I mean, if Tice wanted to, he could just play Shrinkmeister and uh, heal up his, uh, his whelp and clear off right. the... Uh, the Shredder, the Shredder would just hack up his minions. He does decide to go with the Guardian as well. Probably, probably a stronger play overall. Doesn't doesn't give him the opportunity to use that uh, that card draw from those clerics. But mm -hmm. here, this equality I think is going to be pretty good. 
Yeah, I feel like this would be a time, although it's still one of those things where he has Holy Nova, so if you quality and then muster, you might be back at square one minion wise, because the damage is already kind of done. You know, the minion, right. like the, the Nurse Knight Cleric already drew Let cards, which means the priest should be beyond the curve of just one, two drops. Yeah, but and the thing you're is, be in a good spot. the thing is, like, Nurse Knight Cleric drew cards, right? But now he's they're threatening to have board control as well, so Equal here actually gets the back. Uh, so let's not worry about cards, let's worry about the board. Oh! Well, now must for that <laughs> goes to the priest. <laughs> that oh, that no. was not. He didn't play for... around the Lord oh, Show, so he should have mustered first. <laughs> Is he that what he should have first? Wow, you can't play around every single card. That's just that's too hard. So yeah, Lord Walker Cho uh, gives your opponent a, a spell anytime you cast uh, a copy of it, and this is going to go. Really mess with No's plan here. His plan clearly was to play Muster for Battle That's right. after the after the equality, but now the Lore Walker is uh, a little bit too generous with the with the mm. secrets. And now, wow. oh, you know it's, it's actually well. good to give Tyus the Muster because No has Harrison Jones in his hand. That is that is true. That That's Harrison true. Does, and it does provide some <laughs> potential value for yeah, that. Yeah, otherwise you can't even use Harrison correctly, right? It's just a five mana five four. You don't want that. Well, it's humorously enough. Um, there's also Quartermaster in the hand, so Tice can't necessarily just give, like, Muster for Battles right back to the Paladin either. <laughs> um, so, otherwise, this game will, will turn out Trolltastic, which is my favorite type of game. Actually, one of my favorite games of Hearthstone in terms of the tournament gameplay was a match back this summer with Dog versus Nyria. It was a Rogue versus Warrior, and uh, Lord Walker Joe came out of a Shredder. And it was like really weird because the, the rogue was giving oils to the warrior, but the warrior had no weapons. Oh. And so I, both of them were just milling each other nonstop. It was so funny. Yeah, it showed us, uh, you know, messed things up quite a bit. Now Tyus is going to go ahead and give a power <laughs> shield to Kano. All right, they're just, they're just, they're working together here. This is, this is Hearthstone science, you know? They're just eventually going to have the same thing as each other on sure. board everywhere. Makes sense. So he's going to use this to challenge, but the Quartermaster will allow him to get through. Are you mocking me? He doesn't even really need any more cards. He can just cash more of this oh. shot. Yeah. Uh, or I mean, he, he has gone full Nurser, and he's actually getting to the point that he has so many cards in his hand that that could be a liability. Right. Azure Dix will draw more cards. Yeah. Power Shield will draw more cards, and you're using your mana. I have no time well. for games. Oh. Sylvanas comes down, and you know, once again, the Lord Control is still there, so if yep. Tai chooses to, chooses to remove the Sylvanas, though well, he would donate a spell very generously. Shadow Word Death is actually a, a spell that doesn't have many targets in the Priest deck. Uh, Dragon Priest will generally play maybe Chilmaw? Uh, the Blackwing Corruptor is Corruptor as well, that's yeah. true. But usually that's you're using true. like True Silver to kill it, so you don't yeah. necessarily need the Shadow Word Death. <laughs> But it is a luxury. Oh, item. There, there's a target. Speaking of targets for Shadow or Death, there's Doctor Boom. That's not a not a typical inclusion in the uh, the Dragon Tree stacks. Something to consider too is that No would love to use like fast clears to do something, but again, Lord Walker Cho is on his side. Therefore, he can't kill Lord Walker Cho, mm -hmm. and that's what makes it really annoying. It's like your opponent can choose any time to kill it, so he can play his spells but you generally can't unless you play adjacent buff minions or some kind of target buff like Shadow Let me think. And you usually don't have that plan when it comes no. to Shredder. <laughs> no, not really. No. Yeah, Lord Walker definitely leads to some interesting games here. Both players kind of having to debate, you know, is it worth it for me to uh, give my opponent some additional resources? Oh, it's uh, really cool that if Kano actually choose to Consecrate and Power Shield, that Tyus would just lose a card. Yeah, he, he, he would oh, deny him a draw, but he'd also give him more resources. Right. Um, which is what you don't want to do as a priest. Plus, you're giving him consecration. That's like <laughs> one, of the, one of the best that you can ask for. There is that Blackland Corruptor we were just talking about. Uh, this wow, so that... Well, he, he, he can just clear almost everything, right? He can um, kill off the Norse... Oh, he can't uh, kill off uh, everything though. But he, no. he can he can get around Sylvanas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most so he suicides uh, both his Azure Drake and and his zombie Chow. His zombie Chow, for right. example. But he first kills off his Norshire. Onto the uh, yeah. Lo uh, the the peacekeeper. The peacekeeper. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. We're no, right right name. This, this is a very complicated board state. So yeah. we're just trying to uh, bust over words here. It looks like uh, Tice may be choosing not to deal with Sylvanas this turn. He could go for a board flood, and Sylvanas gets a uh, very weak steal, no matter what. I mean, think about it. If he steals any of these, it's not really going to be that beneficial. 
outside the Azure Drake. Yeah, it looks like he is, in fact, choosing to get rid of Sylvanas, giving uh, you know, nothing because sure. all his minions are dead. And then here comes the good Doctor. Yep, Doctor Boom. And he's got Blackman Corrupted to follow up and kick off whatever the boom box. Don't. Amusingly, this is an opportunity for Kano to potentially get that Lorker Cho kill <laughs> with the boom bots. Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. But, um, yeah, at this point, I guess he really wants to cycle the Pyro Shield, right? Yeah. Well, he really wants us to kill his Cho. No! no! Cho will not die. Well, one more time. No! Wow! <laughs> no, Cho, no. Cho played Transcendence. <laughs> no, he can't be hit. Floating on the clouds. <laughs> and uh, that Shadow Word Death number two oh. is a luxury item, but it'd be pretty nice to shut down but, this. Well, he could... He could... Ooh, that's... He could have... Uh, he could have Corruptor. Yeah, corruptor so killed the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he sees it yeah, now. now oh. he just oh. gave away he to kill his Doctor. Oh, he just man. missed it. So now his Doctor Boom is dead for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. A, a very uncharacteristic mistake from Tice there. Well, Tice can actually, um, you know, make the best out of the situation where just ignore the Lord of Show so he can get his Shadow Wars right. Death back. Yeah, yeah at, exactly. at this point, once once you're already in this position, you need to maximize the, the, the <laughs> position you got yourself into. Yeah, all intended. He's trading Boom for his opponent's Boom. Okay. Because then he can uh, Shadow Wars Death his opponent's Boom and something yeah. else. Okay, okay. He just wants another Shadow Wars Death in reserve. I mean, this this is definitely you know, a, a stage at which even the best players can you know potentially let the nerves get to them. Well, it's just an unusual situation. Absolutely, you know? you're not calculating things like that. Yep. Oh, and Kano does see that uh, giving two spells to Tyus is gonna yeah. lose one of his cards, and it might be better because the relative power of Shadow Redemption and Power uh -oh. Shield is kind of low. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tyus has yet to hit some of his really meaty minions. This is a Valence Chosen okay. there. That could be really good since Valence Chosen and Holy Nova does clear off the uh, recruits that get buffed by Quartermaster. Yeah, it's true. However, now that he's given like Power Shield back, like one of the things about Blackwing Corruptor is that even though it gains you tempo, it sometimes uh, just dies really easily to the board. Well, here, I mean, Kano does have the Ashbringer from Tyrion already, so uh, Blackwing Corruptor would not be particularly stable in this board. He can protect it with perhaps a Wormrest Agent. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or power shield. Yeah. Or I, I would imagine that we might see warmest agent, then power shield, and both minions. Sure. Power shield first to draw a card. Mm -hmm. Give it a little bit more information. Oh, that might be a better option. It could be. I think it depends because the black one corruptor is a higher priority target anyways, mm -hmm. and dark cultist oh, would just potentially get bullied. But it does require two weapon swings for it to be efficiently cleared. So, so I think. Now, I believe uh, Kano has the option to attack with Ashbringer into the Corruptor, attack the Healbot into the Dark Cultist, and right. potentially use Consecration to clear both and give no uh, no target for the, the Cultist buff. Well, uh, we, we mentioned that, you know, Tice got Doctor or Shadow or Death to answer his opponent's <laughs> Doctor Boom. And there it is. That kind of is exactly what happened. So, no willingly kills the Dark Cultist. And this is going to get um, answered very easily yeah, too. Yeah. By the it's a, a, a little, uh, a little surprising to me there that that he just chose to effectively allow Tice, if he wanted to, to kill Doctor Boom with right. Holy Nova. Though I guess he, I suppose he does know that there's that Shadow Death anyway. Right. So right. Doctor Boom's not really a particularly high priority to keep in play. However, with this move that Tice does get to keep a minion on the board, this? and this is a very minion centric. Uh, yes. uh, very average result there. No realizing that he's not happy about that result. And, um, you know, Tice is in a, still in a pretty good spot here. Wimmer's agent doesn't have to come out, but I, I guess he just wants more uh, minion power on board. Mm -hmm. Like, force the last attack to go into the 2-4, because yeah. otherwise the, the weapon would probably just be held there. Yep. A, a little bit surprised that, that uh, Kano played that previous turn in such a way that he, he left Tice with such a strong minion. Yeah. Because having, uh, in particular, this nine health uh, on the uh, on the Corruptor, it's very difficult for Kano to kill, given that most of his, his removal is damage-based. And Tice, mm. he's, he's wow. playing Priest. He has a, a hero power that can keep that in play for a long time. And it's in this position where Kano is actually especially behind, 
because Tyre still has the Cabal Shadow Priest. Mm -hmm. And true. coupled with the Shrink Meister, can actually steal every single minion that Kino can play. Have we actually seen Cabal Shadow Priest? Yes, we have. Them? Okay. Yeah. Right. That would be pretty weird to play Shrink Meister without that's, playing Cabal Shadow Priest. Tr it's, it's true, though. Shrink Meister is just a, a, a minion that can allow, in particular, with you have so many early drops, sure. allow them to potentially uh, attack into larger minions or, or just uh, avoid trades in the early game. Speaking of big minions that are tough to kill yep. and damage, there's you, Sarah. The yes, Sarah up against no. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did. Ooh, oh, the, oh. Sarah awakens. She is that awake. Is a really yeah. good one. And she is grouchy in the morning, let me tell you. She <laughs> oh, yes. can wipe almost anything off the board, no matter how crazy the board state is for Paladin. She gets up on the wrong side of the bed a lot. She does. And, you know, she has some bedhead, too. She's kind of looking at the, the leaves. She just kind of gets rustled. <laughs> I don't blame her, too. I, I, I don't really like waking up the leaves <laughs> in my face. And uh, we know that Kano used a, uh, a quality earlier in the game to True deal that. with that, that very strong early start that Tice had. Mm -hmm. uh, many of these mid-range paladin decks maybe play one equality, sometimes two. Uh, and that can, that can make a Ysera a very difficult card to deal with. How like would you deal thing. without it uh, and no preemptive board? I guess the best is silence, generally speaking. Yeah. It's, even if you do silence, it's still a 412 minion. True. It's still able to have a lot of impact on the board, even without its ability. So, what you're telling me, Kibler, is you need to run Ren Black in. Yes, oh. I am telling you that. Though it wouldn't be very good because Kanoda doesn't have any dragons, but that's, that's his own fault, really. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, he is human. All right, oh, well, with Yasser Awakens, does that mean it's lethal? I don't think it's quite, quite enough. Kano is going to go down to 13. Ysera awakens, and Holy Nova is 7, 11. And I believe he is one damage off? Well, if there's a must over battle for yeah. that one damage. Yeah, yeah, I believe he's one damage off lethal. One with damage that off lethal. Yeah, seems like that. All right. Well, you can just like control the board here. It's just the fact that Tyus drew so many cards with the North Shire Cleric. I think he's like actually mm. seven cards. Ahead yeah. of Kano. So if it wasn't for the seven cards, Tyson yeah. would have, his hand would be empty. We could use a visual explanation too. Look at the yeah, deck size for Kano <laughs> and look at the deck size right. for Tyson. And size does matter in this situation. <laughs> 14 to 5. Yeah, Actually, nine cards he's ahead. drawn a lot. <laughs> cards deeper. Right. He would have been uh, negative two cards right now. <laughs> All right. Well, Tyson, uh, I mean, he's just thinking about what's the Quickly. best possible way. Unless. I mean, the way he's sequencing it is as if he believes he has he's kind of lethal, but he's just going to be so close because he can attack with the muscle for battle anyways and have that weapon. Even in the worst case scenario where his opponent has like the quality concentrate, he can still get past it. Yeah, this, this sets up you know, to need to have uh, a, a way to stop a, a pretty big board, and uh, that, yep. that's, that's a way to get past just about anything. Murloc Knight, probably not the yeah. savior right now. Don't think uh, 2020 Murloc is in the game yet. <laughs> and even if it was, it would <laughs> charge. 2020 Murloc would charge. I'll be coming next, expansion. But that's going to wrap it up. Okay. Tice yep. goes to the round of eight, taking out Japan's no, and says, this is my time. I am going to continue to live up to being the EU champion. Yeah, you see a uh, yeah, very satisfied uh, fist pump there from uh, from Tice. Definitely excited to move on to the main stage at BlizzCon next weekend. The first person to uh, advance as well, too. Yeah. And the winning streak continues. Oh, Tice man. going into BlizzCon has had one of the highest win streaks and highest win percentages of uh, any player of all time. Um, in the past two, three tournaments, he's dropped like one or two series total. And he's been, and that, that carries over to August. So I, this guy is on an unbelievable streak of consistency. Even though, yeah, there's a couple of missteps, like you know, the Shadow War Death play. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really love the strategy and the execution from Tice. I mean, he's he's been doing remarkably well. Uh, you know, his team was the winner of the Archon Team League Championship, yeah. and then he individually won the European Championship, right. and came here along with his teammate, Life Coach. So clearly, that whole organization doing very well. And to top it all off, he's bringing Priest. That's yeah, true. He's bringing. He's doing it with a different lineup. He's doing it with cool plays. I mean, tournament right before Blue's Country, he, mm -hmm. he also got second, losing to San Sifka in the finals. I believe it was Star Ladder. Uh, the guy is on fire, and I want to hear what he has to say. He's waiting with Rachel for a couple of words. Thanks so much, guys. I just wanted to first off, Anduin's been hanging out in the back, and I just wanted to present this to you because we don't have any other priests here. So uh, when Blizzard asks at the end of the weekend, that can be yours. I've decided, but. Tice, I just want to say, and Frodan said it, you have the best record going into this. You have to feel supremely confident. 
Yeah, I feel pretty uh, confident. Um, it's still you always have to perform, so it, it, it takes um, it puts a bit pressure on yourself, or I, I at least put pressure on myself. But um, yeah, it's just um, know you can play well and just make sure you play well. Well, game three today, I think, was our, our most exciting game. We we really woke up with that one. That was your your mage versus, uh, of course, Nose Paladin, and I think a lot of people were a little scared for you there. What was going through your mind as that game played out? It was a really difficult game. Uh, of course, I know, or I play a lot of freeze mid, so I I know what the reach is. But like he drew so much because of these murlocs, so I really had to count the low tap and the uh, heal bot. I, I I knew that I had enough damage, but I wasn't scared that I could put the damage in. So I counted if low tap and heal bot comes out, like how much is it gonna hurt me, and am I still able to do it in two turns? So yeah, it was a lot of counting, but. Uh, at the end, um, yeah, 28 damage, I think, at the, in one turn, uh, paid off. Pretty impressive. And now you are the first player to qualify all the way to the BlizzCon main stage next weekend. You get some days off uh, between now and then. How do you think you're going to spend them? Well, today uh, I'm just going to celebrate it a bit. I think uh, it's uh, it's pretty stressful sometimes, so I'm super happy that I go now. If you all, like, if you are here and you're so close, then you really want to make it. So I'm super happy now that I can play at BlizzCon. Well, it couldn't happen to a better player. We're very excited for you, Tice, and I hope you guys at home are enjoying the show. I'm going to give it back to the casters, and we'll be back soon with more games. Appreciate that, Rachel. Very uh, confident and very happy, Tice, as he is the first player to go to the round of eight to BlizzCon and also uh, netting himself a very cool $10,000. Congratulations. Um, but like Rachel said at the very end, it couldn't happen to uh, you know, a more befitting player at the moment currently dominating the, the professional Hearthstone scene. Yeah, he's he's been doing great, and you know we, we see him there. You know, uh, a, a bit of humility. He's saying, you know, yeah, you, you've, even if you're you're one of the, the favorites, you've you've still got to go out there and play. And uh, he's been showing he's able to do that all weekend. That's right. And you, Namaz, you're mentioning uh, Priest being able to be brought out here. He's the only Priest player, and yet we have one Priest in the top eight. Will this convince you, perhaps, to bring Ooh. the Priest back? <laughs> I would like to think that Ty got his uh, you know Priest imagination skills from me. He played Dragon Oh, Prince. so he was inspired <laughs> by Amaz. Hey, hey, no, no. Inspired by Amaz. Man. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he put two zombie chows, two holy novas in the, the priest deck. He really wants to kill that aggro, and it's been working out immaculately, at least for him. His teammate life coach will play tomorrow. We'll find out if he can continue that G2 streak. We're done with this first match of the day. Uh, we want to give a big shout out to our sponsors that help make this happen. Make sure to check out everything that they're pushing out. We also do want to remind you guys to stay engaged in the conversation by hashtagging HWC 2015. Tell us about some of your favorite games and moments or how awesome is that doom hammer which weighs probably about like 20 kilos no joke it yeah. is really it is heavy real duty. heavy yeah i would just want ping ping ho or dai mang the winner of that to just take the doom hammer and smash the other person I two know. times twice because mm -hmm. of wind fury well before we go into our next match let's take a look at some of the highs from our pre previous few games we'll be back guys right after this check out the highlights brought to you by windows 10 game dvr